Hi, Michelle here with the Traveling Epicurean. I'm with my good friend Barbara, and today she's going to show us how to make her gourmet pecan pie. Although today's a little unusual because she's only making two pecan pies, and normally at Christmas time, Barbara <laughs> bakes 70 pecan pies. That's right, I said 70 pecan pies. It's a little crazy. It's a little bit crazy, right? And you start in September when you do this, don't you? No. It cannot start until December. Well, you order the pecans. I order I order though. the pecans in September. They get delivered end of November because I get them from um, down in Georgia. Yeah. Usually I get about 22 pounds of pecans, believe it's it or like not. A giant box, a giant box of box. pecans. And then I go through and chop them up before I even start the whole process. And then seal them and, and seal them, them in four cup bags and then put them back in the refrigerator so that when mm -hmm. I go to actually start cooking these... So you keep them refrigerated? Oh yes, okay. mm -hmm. the whole time. Not the freezer, but the refrigerator. Yeah, refrigerator. Well, okay. because as long as you use them within a month, yeah. it's okay. Okay. <laughs> and I'll be using them within a month. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so yes, yeah. so that's so what I do. That's so amazing. And so what she does with these 70 pecan pies is she hand delivers them with her invite to her Christmas Eve party, which she also cooks for. <laughs> I think I need to feel your forehead, Barbara. <laughs> it is a little crazy. All right, this is excellent with bourbon, scotch, wine, coffee, or milk, if you prefer. <laughs> and whipped cream. Some people do whipped cream. If you buy whipped cream, cream, but you don't need that with the other sugar. <laughs> and I'll put and six guys up that have had it with all of those. <laughs> this, this all started because of a surprise birthday party that was done for me by Peter. And that year, one of the other hostesses that helped him out thought it would be a great idea to have a basket that everybody would put in a little note on when they met me. Some story. So after several glasses of wine... And this was a surprise birthday? This was a surprise, surprise so I knew nothing about okay. this. So at the end of the party, basically, after several glasses of wine, we ended up... I ended up having this basket presented to me with all these little pieces of paper in it saying, a story of when they met me, and then I would have to identify who that person was. Which is very difficult when you have about 40 or 50 people in a room. It's a scattering of different stories. So one of the stories was a individual said, oh, the first time I met you is because you brought one of your chocolate pecan pies, because you always bring that over for somebody who's just moved in. And I look out on the cast of characters, and I thought, oh my, who could this have been? Oh my goodness. So trying to think, and then finally came out as one, you know, we figured out who it was, and then the rest of the room said, well, wait a minute, who's had one of these pies? Yeah, where's so my you had half of the pie? room with the hands up, the other half without. Then that Christmas is when I started, whoever came to the Christmas Eve party, they got a chocolate pecan pie. So it started out with 10 that year, and since then and it has And how long ago was this? Um, I'm not any older, but um, no, probably, probably 15 years. Oh my, so you've been doing so this for 15, 15 years? years. Were probably about five at that point. We had a little Christmas hat on, we ring the doorbell, and oh, deliver pies. Sure. Merry Christmas, I'm here Santa's little helper. <laughs> That's what you used you're, to do. You were always very happy doing You sent them to the door with the pie? Oh yeah. Yep. Yes, yes I would swing. drive and we would give them and they'd be in their little bag with a little bow on top. Oh my gosh. And they would go and deliver. That is so we cute. Like I love eight that. Eight at a time. Little pie elves. Little pie elves. And now you're leaving so you can't deliver this to Mary. No, right? unfortunately this elf will not be around. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure to save you a slice. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so, and the standards are that the pies get baked and they get delivered within 24 hours. So some people would get them even, even hot out of the oven. Oh my goodness. Whether or not I had to go up you know, icy driveways to deliver and all that. So it, it's been fun. But it just has grown over the years. And last year I think it was up to 70 or 72. To the oh point my. now, my son has moved to Chicago and he requested last year six pies and two of them being yes, gluten-free. Gluten gluten free. Gluten-free. Now you have to change the recipe. But that's okay because I have a lot of followers who are gluten-free who always kind of... Well, the only, thing, so the only, the only issue you would have is the pie crust. Okay. And the pie crust now, last year I saw Pillsbury... Rice in, flour? Pillsbury has a little tub oh. that you can get that is gluten-free pie crust. I love that. I made four of them, delivered two to Chicago, one to one neighbor on this street, another one down the other street. And they all said it was really, really good. Oh, Much different fantastic. than what it used to be. I love that. So. Barbara, you're amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're an inspiration for all of us. Thanks. 
Okay, Barb, so these are the things that we're going to need to make our two pecan pies. I know you usually make four at a time. <laughs> it's much easier when you do it in increments of two. Okay, so let's see what we have here. And these are really chocolate pecan pies. Oh, I'm so sorry, just yes. pecan. Chocolate pecan pies. That's the major difference. Oh, and boy, are they good. The chocolate, I use the Hershey's Special Dark. It okay. just, you know... It gives it a little bit more of a sweetness, not as much sweetness, but the chocolate comes out a little bit more. Isn't there a higher cocoa content in that? Yes, yeah. there is. Okay. And I like the I Hershey's. Who loves well, I like the Hershey's dark. versus some of the other ones. These, you know, just are better. Yeah. Then um, this is butter. For okay. Each pie takes four eggs, so we've got eight eggs. We've got the pie crust. I use the Pillsbury because I usually do these in major quantities, so it's much easier as yeah. opposed to making my own. Okay. If you wanted to make your own, go for it, but <laughs> this is why we do two because you've got two of these per box. The um, corn syrup, and another reason to do two, it's two cups for two pies, so yeah. you don't have to measure. Okay. Then it's um, two-thirds cup of sugar for each pie, so this is you know one and one-third cup sugar. Okay. And some vanilla, but not least, are the actual chopped pecans. And now you ground those up a lot, didn't you? Yeah, I do it more on the fine basis. Some people do the pecan pies, and the pecans are on the top, and they end up being really whole. Okay. Yeah, I don't really like it as much that way. This way, the pecans have a tendency to maybe go through the whole pie, so it's more, instead sure. of just a layer, and it, gives it, it a goes nice down. And it gives a nice texture, too. And it's easier to eat. So how many times did you pulse that? About Ooh, four or five. Probably about four or five. I mean, it's just so that it's not a total fine, fine mixture, yeah, and it's, it's not okay. A powder, it's, it's not a powder, but it, it's not just you know, it's more of a fine chop. Okay. And then we've got just for on top to dress up the pies once they're actually put in yeah. is just to put some of the half pecans on top just to make it. Excited for you to make your pecan, your chocolate pecan, pecan pie. pie. What do you normally do to get this going? Okay, to start off with, I usually start with the pie crust. Okay. Now, as you can see, I use the Pillsbury pie crust. And these are room temperature? These are room temperature. Okay, okay. so just put a little flour on the bottom of the pan. It, um, it just gives it a yeah, nice just, coating. Just a nice little coating. Pie plate and yeah. the crust. So then go through and cut open your pie crust. Anyone who wants to make their own pie crust, Go right ahead. Sure, but when you're making <laughs> seven <laughs> pies, pies. When you're making the quantity that I do, this is what I do. And so far, nobody has really complained. No, the Surprisingly pies are amazing. <laughs> okay, so these just generally roll out. Okay. And place it in the pie shell. And now you don't just make and deliver the little pie. You yeah, deliver now this a is, giant nine-inch pie. This is the nine-inch deep dish. And um, really, years ago when I started, when I'm doing these for Christmas time, yeah, I do it in the foil pans. Yeah. And if you get the deep dish pans, what I found is that the pie crust works perfectly with that. If I use the smaller pans, I would have to put, cut the top of the crust because it was just too too big and it would go over top of the pans. Yeah. Um, that was extra time. So it was much more worth it to do the extra large pans. And I think all the recipients approved of that because they got a much larger pie. <laughs> of course. So what I love is how you crimp these to make them look like a scallop. Okay, so we now need the pie doing, crust, the pie so now crust. we're going to start doing the inside. The filling, okay. So what I usually start with first is the eggs. Okay. And in this case, you know, it's four per... Uh, Do you want me to help you there? Sure. Okay. Sure. It's four per pie, so we're going to be doing eight. Okay. And I just crack them, don't get any shells in, and then, you know, just slightly beat them. You don't want them... You don't want to get them too frothy, okay. because then it gets... It actually stays a little frothy in the pie. Yeah. Surprisingly enough. And then and they they actually, I've learned this. And those bubbles actually cook <laughs> they at cook, the end. I've they done cook, that too before. They cook there and I'm like, what <laughs> is going on? Why did these me. bubbles finish cooking looking like bubbles? They don't flatten out, right? No, no. Yeah. You suddenly you have to just you know kind of break all the yolks and not get too much froth in there, even though I'm doing it with a whisk. So that's done. Okay. So I don't know. You know, if you do it too much, it just gets 
the froth. froth. And then you bake the bubbles. And then you bake the bubbles. <laughs> and it's like a, so what I do is you melt the butter. Um, you don't have to have it too horribly hot. Sometimes I have, you know, still some. It's melted, but it's melted, but you don't want it more towards room temperature. More towards room temperature because you don't want it to be too hot. Yeah. Um, you know, because then it could cook the eggs before the eggs really cooked. Exactly. Then I'll put the sugar in, and especially I'll do that because next will be the eggs. Because well, the sugar can also cook the eggs. The, the sugar can cook the eggs. But at least if the sugar will take some of the heat from the butter. Gotcha. So I figure, okay, I'm not going to cook the eggs quite as much. Yeah. So. If you've ever had to measure corn syrup, yeah. you don't want to do it. No. I'm so sure this not. is why, even though we were planning this morning to make one, I told Michelle two were better. Two would be better, yeah. Then we so don't have to measure anything yeah, because measure it already anything. comes that way. It already involved. comes that way and you just blow it out. I love that. And also for the Hershey, um, the Hershey chocolate chips, right? Mm -hmm. We use the whole bag you because we're making bag. two pies. So this is how you don't have to measure. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, when you're doing 70 pies, Barbara, <laughs> you don't want to think too much. <laughs> and the vanilla I'm supposed to have, um, it's about two teaspoons, and I usually go a little heavy, so I'm going to do a tablespoon, okay. which is really three. I don't always follow my own recipes. That's okay. <laughs> but I like having extra flavor of the vanilla in there. Okay. I know. We, who doesn't love that flavor? And I'll have the, the single portion on the website so you can follow that. And of course, you can see how easy it is to make it into two pies, right? <laughs> so. so we have that mix, and now do you add in the eggs? Add in the eggs. Okay. And so the eggs actually go in last. Yeah. Okay. Just because with the frothiness, if they went in earlier and you're trying to combine the other ingredients, you might end up putting more froth in again. So because I try not because you're stirring it. Exactly. Okay. So you just want to stir. Oh so yeah. So that's that's that. And then the two cups of um, cons. And look at that. That important. looks amazing. The and important the, stuff. The important stuff. The chocolate. The yes, goods. my husband would never have thought he liked pecan pies until I put chocolate in. Really? <laughs> it's amazing oh. what chocolate will do. Pecan pie is one of my favorite. Look at that mixture. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, it's that looks amazing. Okay, so now we're going to be ready to put it into the pie shell. So. So you're just going to eyeball that. Just going to eyeball it and. The important part is to, as you're getting it, to try to make sure you're not jipping one of the pies out of the With chocolate. With the chocolate chips, because the chocolate chips kind of sink to the bottom. The chocolate they? chips ultimately sink to the bottom. But, um, so what I do is I use this two cup measuring scoop to make sure each one has enough chocolate in it. I love that. Because That's a great system. Yeah. I could see you putting out 70 of these. <laughs> okay, so you have one last thing you're going to do to yes. your pies here. One last thing I almost forgot, and I get very upset with myself, is put a little decoration of the pecans Isn't that around pretty? the top. It's just going to be That's a great invention. I wish we invented these rims. <laughs> <laughs> I have a real issue with the pie crust being burnt. Yeah. Um, so the standards are still trying to be kept. Okay, fantastic. All right. Okay, in the oven they go. Oh my goodness, they look like so good. So oh, there we go. Smells incredible. So do we get a pie or no? Well, we only made two. So one will go to Michelle. The other one will get cut in half, and we have to deliver it to Mary. So all right, junk to junk. I love your shop. Mary. Thank you. And we brought you the pie because you, you left us. You were supposed I to did. tell a story about Barbara's about pecan pies. pie. Yes. So Actually, last year, I think yours did get delivered here. So it's it did get delivered here, You yes. delivered her pie to her store. That's yes, so she did. Store. She did. So, my story about Barbara Carpenter's famous pecan, chocolate pecan pie is that somebody actually came into the store and her daughter dated one of Barbara's sons. Oh my goodness. 
And so we started to talk because the Chris, Barbara's Christmas party was coming up close by and they broke up right before Christmas. Aww. So this woman said to me, do you think I'm going to get a pie this year? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think I'm going to be invited to the party because my daughter is not going to be, you know, it's kind of awkward. But do you think I'll still get a pie? Oh my goodness, and so I so said, I don't know. I said, I'd be really bummed if I didn't get a pie. So wow, that's like really tough, tough thing. So then it just so happened I was delivered my pie. So I thought it'd be nice and say to Barbara, just so you know, your son's ex-girlfriend's mom really wants a pie. <laughs> My so I think she got one. She did get a pie that year. Yes. Oh my goodness. Look at that pie. Barbara, this is incredible. <laughs> you I helped. show the side. I really didn't help. You did most of it. <laughs> They're really pretty easy gorgeous? to do. Oh, unbelievable. And let me get a, a close-up of this oh, here. The cut? The cut. There you go. Isn't that pretty? That's just so beautiful. All right, we are going to dig into a piece right now. <laughs> we're so giddy because we're really excited about eating this slice of pecan pie mm -hmm. that we're sharing. Yes, we're sharing. <laughs> I'm taking the pie. You okay. Usually it gets served with either whipped cream or ice cream. Ooh, that sounds But today delicious. we're going, you know. Solo. Just solo. We'll see how it is. We've got the taste test. And I don't think we'll be missing the ice cream or the whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks good. I usually don't get to taste test these things right afterwards. Because you deliver that. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. Mm. You're going to love this recipe. Mm. This is, that's incredible. The nugget, the chocolate. Yeah, no, the chocolate and the pecans just kind of mixing together. It mixes. It's very good. It's a perfect combination. I don't say so myself. You did such a great job. <laughs> Thank okay. you for sharing this All recipe. Right. We got the recipe out of her. You know all those people on the list, aren't they trying to get that recipe from Well, you? that was one of the rules. You if know, they if, got if the you recipe, got the recipe, you might not be on the list. So you take it I off the list. I might not be making as many this year. <laughs> you <laughs> well, never that's know. For you, right? <laughs> a little less work from those seventy pies. Well, yeah. no, oh. I don't know if that would really happen. Well, but you can find the recipe and make sure that if you're on the list, you don't mm -hmm. learn how to make it too well because you might be taken off the list. <laughs> but you can find the recipe at thetravelingepicurean.com. Ciao. Ciao. Take care.